As developers, there's so much information that we need to retain in order to do our jobs. There is the general knowledge such as language syntax, as well as design patterns and architectural best practices that we need to remember. But there's also going to be a lot of domain specific knowledge that you need to remember in order to solve problems for those that you work for. When I used to work in the payments industry, I had to know how card processing worked from end to end. And that was just too much knowledge to store in my head. Whether you're trying to learn how to code or you're trying to work your way up the career ladder, it's important that you have a system in place so you can retain all of this information. This is where knowledge management systems come in, or KMS for short. KMS is really just a fancy way of taking notes, linking them all together and organizing them. Now you may have heard people talk about the second brain or the Zettelkasten method. These are just different ways that you can organize your notes. The second brain area is a bit more structured and it has folders for things like projects and knowledge areas. Whereas the Zettelkasten method mostly consists of all of your notes in one folder. It really doesn't matter what method you pick, especially if your main goal is just to remember more of what you're learning. These methods are mostly for writers and creators who want to retain knowledge and combine them into new ideas. For software developers, your notes will probably more resemble a personal wiki than some of these other methods. It can be very easy to get sidetracked and spend too much time trying to come up with a perfect system to organize all your notes. Please don't do that. Just focus on taking notes and you can always change how things are organized in the future. When it comes to note taking applications, there's quite a few to choose from, but not all of them are that great for developers. If you're going to be writing notes about software development, then you're likely going to need an app that supports code blocks, as well as the ability to add diagrams. One of the best ways I've seen for adding notes to your diagrams is to use Mermaid. Mermaid has support for loads of different diagrams, such as flowcharts, sequence diagrams, class diagrams, state diagrams, and a lot more. Depending on what you want to do with your notes, you may want some features such as API support as well as support for lots of different plugins. So let's have a look at some of the options. The first is Notion. I'm sure you've probably heard of Notion already. It's one of the easiest note taking applications out there. It has lots of different features and it has a very generous free tier and it also works on all your different devices. One of the great things about Notion is that it comes with cloud syncing for free, which is often a paid feature in a lot of the different note taking applications. Notion has great support for syntax highlighting and you can also use mermaid diagrams as well. Notion does support Markdown, but it's not a proper Markdown editor. As soon as you write something in Markdown, it will convert it into the Notion format, which generally means that you have to either use your mouse or delete what you've just written to change the style. Where Notion shines is not in its ability to take notes, but how it organizes the data that you put in. I use Notion for all of my planning. Just having the ability to switch between a Kanban board and a calendar view is really useful. Notion also has an API, which means you can do some really cool things with different applications as well. There's also a whole load of ready-made integrations that you can use. Personally, I have my Notion connected via API to a self-hosted NAN instance. This allows me to do things such as schedule tweets, update my Kanban board when my videos or posts go live, as well as keep track of all of the keywords that I'm trying to rank for. For pure note-taking though, there are better options out there for developers. Number two is Obsidian. Obsidian is my personal favorite. It's completely free and has native support for Markdown. In fact, all of your notes are just stored as Markdown files, which means if you do choose to switch applications in the future, it's gonna be easier. Obsidian supports syntax highlighting and mermaid diagrams, just like Notion. And it also supports a large number of themes and community plugins. You can even set it up to use Vim key bindings for all of those Vim wizards out there. The downside of Obsidian is it doesn't have a free cloud syncing option, but for the privacy conscious people out there, that's probably a good thing. You can pay for Obsidian Sync for $10 a month, but you don't actually need to do that. Because all of your notes are just Markdown files, you can just use your existing cloud storage, whether that be iCloud, Dropbox, or OneDrive. On top of that, there's also a community plugin you can use to sync all your notes up to a GitHub repository. Obsidian does come with apps for iOS and Android, but to be honest, I haven't had the best experience with them. The apps are fine if you don't use a lot of community plugins, but for me, I find that they lock up quite a bit. If the community plugins aren't important to you on a mobile device, you can copy your Obsidian settings folder and rename it to .obsidian.mobile. And then in the settings, you can point it to the new settings folder and then disable the plugins without it affecting Obsidian on your computer. Overall, I really like Obsidian, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. So let's have a look at some of the other options. Number three is Dendron. If you spend all of your time in VS Code, then this option might be for you. Dendron isn't a separate note-taking app, but an extension for VS Code. Like Obsidian, everything is stored as Markdown files, and it obviously has support for syntax highlighting. It also supports mermaid diagrams out of the box. On top of that, you also have access to all of the different VS Code extensions, so if there's any that you can't live without, you can also use them with your note-taking as well. 
The downside is around the mobile app. As far as I'm aware, there's no official mobile app for VS Code. If you do want to see your notes on a mobile or tablet, then potentially you can use Obsidian to do this. I don't use Dendron myself, so there's a possibility that it won't work. There could be some compatibility issues between the two. If you use Dendron and Obsidian together, then let me know in the comments. Another great option, this time from an indie developer, is called Inkdrop. Inkdrop's been designed specifically for developers, so it supports Markdown as well as syntax highlighting and mermaid diagrams. It seems to have a pretty good community around it, and there's lots of different plugins as well as themes that you can use. Inkdrop, however, is isn't free and it does cost $4.99 a month. It's a lot simpler than Obsidian and the UI to me looks very much like Apple Notes. If you want something that's simple, developer focused and also supports an indie developer, then Inkdrop might be for you. Another option that's often mentioned is Bear. Bear has a really clean interface, but it's not actually that great for developers. For one, it's Mac and iOS only. So if you're on Windows or Android, you're out of luck. It does support Markdown, but it doesn't have full Markdown support. So you can't do things like add tables or images using Markdown, which is a bit disappointing. Bear does have syntax highlighting, but it doesn't support mermaid diagrams. Your notes in Bear are also stored in a SQL-like database rather than Markdown files, so it's not as flexible as some of the other options I've mentioned. Bear does have a nice looking mobile app, but if you want your notes to sync across, then you'll need to pay $1.49 a month for Bear Pro. It isn't a huge amount, but I think there are better free options out there for developers. There are, of course, other options available. I know a lot of people like Roam Research, but at $15 a month, I can't personally see the benefits over the other apps that I've covered. Notion is probably the easiest option, especially if you want to access your notes on all your devices. My only concern is storing all of my notes in a proprietary format on the cloud. If anything should happen to Notion, then I'd lose all of my notes. At least if something happens to Obsidian, I still have all my notes in an easily readable text format. So that's why I prefer Obsidian over Notion. I just make sure that I back up my notes in multiple places. If you like this video, then you might also like this one on how I take and organize my notes. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.